make you sound you make you sound like a chipmunk. Yeah. Edit. <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of Nerds Who Get Laid Sometimes. And I'll be your host this evening, again, uh, TJ. Mr. TJ. And TJ. this is period J. And here, yeah, just one, the just one, just period. one period. Not two. Why one? That's the way it goes, Charles. Yeah. Way it goes. We don't, we don't ask why around here. We just do it. Why? Well, because you have oh, to pay Jesus. by the letter, like we're not kids. paying an extra letter. Why? For a period. All right. Anyway, uh, Charles is here. And yeah. Yep. Sorry, everybody. Or is it <laughs> Neckman? Neckman's not here. Yeah. Maybe. Neckman is not here, maybe. Or is he? I don't know. No one knows. No. We all know. No one knows. And uh, Ray is I'm here. here. <laughs> because you're actually listening to the podcast, so... Yeah, we'll you have to be here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if there's an essential part to our podcast, it, it would have to be Ray. It's, it's the recording part. <laughs> yeah. That or the microphones. Because we actually yep. do a lot more podcast, quote unquote, episodes. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we just don't record them. Yes, that's very true. And uh, uh, with us is our special guest, Katie. Hey. Hey, Katie. How's it well, going? Welcome Good. back. Hey. It's been a little while. You, it's, uh, you were on a couple of, maybe a couple of months back. That was like a couple of weeks ago, bro. Was it a couple yep. of weeks ago? Mm-hmm. It was, wasn't it? It's been it? a really long year. I know it really like, has. 2015. Yeah. Is. Was it? Or is it no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, but we're glad to have you back. Thank yes. you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Right. Always in, enjoy discussing mm-hmm. nerd things with uh, with Miss Katie there. Yep. So, uh, so how's everyone's week been? Pretty good. I've had an interesting week, but yeah. the best part has been putting your savory meat in my mouth this evening. Yes, it was it's just and yeah, just they good love job, that. Ray. I love that. That's aged meat, so yeah. I mean it's appropriate. Ray yeah. is old as balls. Yep. Mm. I'm actually literally as old as my balls. Yes. Funny enough. So <laughs> But no, dude, this the stew was great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um TJ's been having some themed parties. If you haven't been invited, it's because we hate you. Um <laughs> But mm, uh so he's, good. he's having a Irish <laughs> one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I decided to try a Guinness beef stew. Uh, I'm trying it out to make sure it was going to work good for the party. And apparently, it apparently it got worked pretty really high well. ranks. Yes, yeah. so. very well. Mm-hmm. So, Katie, how's your week been? <laughs> it's been pretty good. How's your life been since we last talked to you? Um, that's same old, okay, same old. Good school. job. Yeah. <laughs> same old, same old. That's, same old, same old. Yeah, that's about it with all of us. So, Charles, you yes, said sir. good. Let's yeah. elaborate. Uh, I'm just waiting for my tax money to get in. PS4 is going to be here soon. I know. Still. I know. Uh, I didn't kill anybody I work with. I okay, good. good with knives, but I work with complete idiots. I'm here. Have you shook oh, your knives off they're all, any, uh... I'm sure they're all glad to hear that. Yeah. Oh, I know. I mean, it's just, hey, I kept my restraint. I didn't get arrested, so it's a good week. Have you got to uh, show off your knives to any pretty girls lately? No. No? Okay. Well, one would you day, like to Charles, see him, one, Yeah, I would actually love to see your knives. I would love to see you work with your knives. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, Ray, uh, how was your week? Yeah, my week was. Let me think. Well, uh, one thing. Uh, me and Nate were on a. We're sorry, guys. We're not trying to cheat on you. Uh, we were guest on another podcast. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we really? actually were. It was, yeah, and it uh, it went pretty good. It was a lot of fun. Um, we just kind of got interviewed. Uh, these are this is Geekcast Live, so you can uh, you can find them on the interwebs. Uh, They're not pre-recorded, then. No, okay. No, it was live. We were alive. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Those guys were a lot of fun. Um, we just got to kind of shoot the shit with them and everything. Talk about geeks versus nerds and how nerds are definitely cooler than geeks. Yeah, oh, um, definitely. So yeah, so that that was pretty fun. Um, I actually recorded a commercial for a friend this week. That was kind of fun, a radio commercial. So uh, it's for a mo- it's for a school project that they're doing in college, but it was still kind of fun. So, oh neat. I don't think I've I don't think I've nerd wise done a whole lot this week. Still uh, trudging through X Men, and right now it is trudging. Yeah, where are you at now? 
Ah, oh, gosh. I'm I'm still it's still the nineties. It's uh, like a three fifty, three sixty ish. Odd. Um, oh, what's so the, you just got done with the like trial of gambit? type stuff yeah i'm i'm uh, probably a good 10 past that 10 oh ep- uh, issues by, you must maybe. be about ready to stab yourself yeah. in the face it is it god it gets that bad yeah, yeah. i had i had uh, during my run of x-men before i hadn't gotten this far um and there's some stuff that was interesting before i think i just finished the uh, magneto war i think it was called oh okay where joseph who is a clone of magneto shows up and they fight each other and and uh like it finally that part of it kind of got interesting again a little bit enough to like huh nothing or enough to like be able to go through you know i you i can, can go actually through go through it yeah. and i'm not uh, there there was there was at least one issue that i was like oh, god i can't do it i'm skipping this <laughs> so now you're actually having to like try to power now, through now it now i'm just actually I'm, I'm reading it again um and the last few issues i haven't felt like just like you said stabbing my eyes out so it's it's rough, but it looks like some better issues are coming. So we'll see. So uh, anything else? Anyone else? Well, well I, I was heading into town last night and I saw um saw a fireball. It was cool. yeah, it was it was pretty decent. I was at, um heading towards Lake City and I remember that. Yeah, I remember just hearing about that. And I was like, wow, that's and. You no, know, normally you see this like shooting star, and it's like okay. But well, this was actually like a fireball. It was it was pretty neat. It was like part of a meth lab. No, no, oh, okay. <laughs> no. It didn't like brighten up the whole sky or anything, but it's significantly larger it was than a normal sh- shooting star, and you could see. And it was obviously like fire on it. I don't I don't know how to how to explain it. It was pretty neat. I remember in first Transformers movies they were coming to Earth like that. Yeah, it wasn't a Transformer Charles because that's not real. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, I do. Alien lives. You know, what? robot aliens. Yes. Robot alien mm-hmm. lives. Look, we've already determined that's probably BS. So we've already uh, here on the podcast. We have determined. Yeah, that. before you joined. Yeah, but I want to believe. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Whatever. Of, have Have you watched the new X Files? It's over already. The new one? Yeah. No, I haven't seen the new okay. one. No one has. No. So. <laughs> I'm right. Sorry, I, I I liked the old one, I guess, but I was in high school, so I was like, yeah. Hey. I, I really want to see them. I just haven't yet. So, yeah, I've got no desire to go back to that yeah. one. Yeah, I, I heard I, it did an interesting it. twist on it, but I'm just no. Becoming more depressed. Why? You just bring me down. Now I see why Blaze left. <laughs> Blaze, Blaze lived down. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, left. You you imply that he was ever really here much. <laughs> True. Very true. Yeah. Like episodes one through five. And that was about it. Because yeah. most of those I joined were... in five. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. wait. Oh, wait. This, that <laughs> now is we a, see the pattern. That yeah. is a pretty convenient <laughs> thing there. So. All right. All right. So what have we got uh, going on? Uh, what else we got going on tonight? Well, we're going to be talking about Nickelodeon. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we forgot to mention why Nate and Mike aren't here. Yeah. Yeah, Nate. Oh, uh, you may have noticed Nate and Mike are not here. Surprise, surprise. Maybe you noticed. Maybe you're uh, cheering for, you know, cheering. They're not here. I'm serious. It's it, it's just getting old. It it's really getting is. old. We all we every week we have to come up with some excuse when they're not here and why they're off having. Uh, and it's just like it's anal sex. You know, if they want to go have anal sex, they can go have anal sex. They don't have to make up excuses. I mean, yeah, like, I get I'm that. sick. I I've got explosive that. diarrhea or something. You know, but I mean, it, the culprit is Blaze. Pretty much. Really? Yeah. He's finger cuffs for Mike and Nate. So we're going to blame Blaze again? Yes, because they're spending time it's with not Blaze. not too old yet. Do I? We haven't beat that one too much yet. Beat what? Yeah, Blaze I, off? I mean, it's not a it's not an edge of your seat joke or anything. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not. But it's like they keep... They don't want to be here. I'm like, I enjoy being here. I like being with everybody around here. But it's like they think it's a better time, better way to spend time. It's more quality time being around Blaze. Blaze left and rest areas. That is yeah, true. Yeah. So I'm like, just they're off having fun with Blaze. They don't want to be here. That's an air quote. Yeah, that is an air quote. Yeah. But I just, I'm just tired of it. Well, and it was one of those things. Like we were really surprised to find out that Nate had that that weird uh, foot fetish, and he just really likes to suck on Blaze's toe, which is just really odd. Uh, um, and just kind of, uh, 
I mean, it's a, it's a little much, but I mean, I, mean, his, I know it's his toast. Into. I know his toast still has to be in the Crocs when he's sucking on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's just because he, he really he likes just that. opens those that things are like a harbinger for bacteria. Yeah, he, well, oh he, my, he really likes. Well, the he has to have the funk. Yeah. Nathan, if Nathan, Nathan needs uh, anything, he needs the funk. He does. Deep down in his heart. He has to have the funk. In his mouth? Well, uh, anywhere. Yeah, all over him. You know, Nathan has to live in the funk. Yeah. And, I mean, I get, uh, um, get Mike sick. just likes to watch, <laughs> so. Yeah. It's uh, weird. Well, it's weird, but he, he I mean, likes, it's what they're into, guys. I he mean, likes to have it, like, Nate, Nate has to suck the exactly. funk off of Blaze's toes and then French kiss it in Mike's mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. That was a Katie gag, by the way, guys. <laughs> oh, I thought Nate was here. <laughs> All no, right, well. No I guess it's time for the news. Well, let's do the news. You know what I want to do? Please, can we do the news? <laughs> Katie wants to do the news. You know who else wants All to right. do the news? do is read some news. As you get late, presents Ray with the news. News about comics, movies, video games, and Marvel. Marvel comics, the only thing that Ray really wants to talk about. Wait, what's that? This just did extra, extra read all about it. You can tell us more news and about Marvel, Ray. Now let's turn it over to Ray with the news. All I want to do is read some news. That's my new favorite part of our podcast. I listen to it on repeat. Um... Okay, so we, we actually have a lot to go over today in the news. Uh, first, No Man's Sky uh, finally has a release date. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know about No Man's Sky, TJ. Well, um, it is a game that will take you five billion hours to find everything in the game. Mm-hmm. It's literally impossible to like do everything in this game because, yeah. if I understand correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, um, literal worlds... Uh, everything is like a minute there is a minute here and the worlds are the size of our world or a world yeah so if you explore things on that world it would literally take you as long as it would on this world yeah everything's procedurally generated and everything Ooh. they've actually created uh probes to fly out into their universe and everything the developers have to uh, fly out into their universe to try to discover if there are actually limits to it yeah. So this is coming out on June 21st. Sold. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have a... On the PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4. Yes. Um, I was looking into it, and the pre-release cost is... I think it's just 50 or 60 bucks. That's the same as anything else. So, yeah. What I'm, um, what I'm curious about is... is I'm not concerned about uh, how much content is there, but the quality of it. Yeah. Well, it was announced my concern. in 2000... 13. 13, I believe, yeah. and they're just now getting it out now. Three years later, I, I feel like there's a decent amount of time. Yeah, because there's a couple guys I work with that they were just rave about it, waiting for it to come out, waiting for it to come yeah. out, wanting to tell me about it. I'm like, I don't care, and then I started seeing stuff about it. I'm like, I was an idiot. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's one of those that's going to take so long to do anything, and I don't really, I haven't read into it well, enough to know. I think they're going to have like, like warp gates and stuff like that, okay. from what I understand. Is there an actual store, an actual story to that's it? What I'm, that's what I'm concerned okay. about. Is there a if story it's just to free, it? Yeah. yeah, if it's just free roaming and stuff like I'm that. I'm probably out if it's that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's a lot of crafting, I'm probably not in for it yeah. either. Yeah. That's, if I'm trying to build a society and it's not SimCity, then pff, exactly. I'm done. Um, another thing we have coming out. April 1st, you can get the digital download of Star Wars Force Awakens. And April 5th, Blu-ray. That is 5th. Yeah. Don't correct me with your fingers. So you said April 21st? No, No, April 1st. 1st is is the digital digital download, download. and then the 5th (sighs) is the Blu-ray. I don't trust this April 1st business. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's, but, that's I the mean, digital. No, I think it is because uh, Walmart, they have a thing where gonna, you can pre order the super, digital release. They're going to super troll people. Or at least I would if I was in charge. And everyone that pre ordered, like episode seven, I'd give them episode one. Oh, God. No, because uh, Walmart <laughs> has. Because it is April 1st. I mean, exactly. that's kind of well, that, That's just for the digital, but the actual physical release is the well, fifth. Yeah, they're when talking that's about because out. of uh, April Fool's Day. I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because Target I would, has an exclusive. I don't would be think all that's, over that. I don't think that's enough of a like. Oh, surprise! You didn't. Or the Star yeah, Wars know, Christmas maybe. special. <gasps> that would be really because I would pay good money for that. <laughs> I saw that on YouTube. No, no, no it's terrible. But like, I always terrible. have to go find YouTube and find the thing. Like, I would want it. It's bad. Oh. 
But I also I, really I like have the a, Ewok movies. So. I might have a source I could I can hook you up. Yes, yeah. thank you. It's bad. No problem. All right, so um, Star Wars coming out. Uh, we also got the first Ghostbusters trailer uh, this week. So we've been... In respect of our guests, I'm trying to hold back this no, side. No, you don't have really to hold back. Oh, like, good. You could... <sighs> no, admit it. Admit it. Listen, we've been beating this up pretty bad, talking about how horrible we thought it would be. And it's I proven want, right. Well, no, no that's just so a trailer. Okay. You can't really tell anything. Katie, I want to hear about, because you were telling us while yes. we were watching it earlier, that you're looking forward to it. You think yes. it looks really good. Because, so tell like, us about my favorite SNL people are in it. Like, so I'm, I'm really excited about the four. Like, I know Chris Marley's in it? Carthy. Okay, no, recent SNL. Oh, okay. I'm like Kate McKinnon, like she's awesome, and so like I oh, know she'll be really funny, and she's very underrated. I think. Now, which one so, is she? She's the blonde one, okay. who I think is supposed to be like kind of like Egon. I don't know. I have yeah, to think Egon-ish. of it separate. Yeah, I'm trying to the, keep it separate, but right. it's like they're combining like Some Melissa elements. McCarthy and the Ray and Peter mix. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I try and, not to think of it that way because I don't yeah. think I'll like it that no. way. If you take it completely separate, I think I'll like it better. Yeah. If you try to place it into it. But I think they're all making, like, I know Bill Murray's in it and Dane Aykroyd's mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, and they so they, they didn't show any of them. And Ernie Hudson yeah. also. I think it's a good move, though. Yeah. Don't show them. No, yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. Not a, not this early, anyway, because this is the first trailer that we've we've got. Yeah. I think I'm going to be really angry when I see them in it, though, because I'm, I'm going to be really pissed off that they couldn't get over it while Harold Ramis was alive. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't and get something done yeah. then. I don't but, think I can watch that. I can watch it. I don't think I can. I, I will watch it, and I will give it a shot, but yeah. I'm going to go into it like I expect most movies, which is a big pile of crap. Yeah. But see, if you go in expecting that every time, then you're pleasantly surprised. Exactly. That's why I do that. Yeah. But I think if I keep it separate from the old, I'll like it a lot better, too, because I'm so invested in the old that I don't want to... Yeah. You know, if you try to combine the two, you'll really hate it. Yeah, and I really hope it is just. I hope it is a reboot. Yeah. They don't try to make it a sequel or something. Like it that. looks yeah. like it. It looks like I. I, and I think they're so confused at what they're actually making. That's I, what makes that's me what nervous. Yeah. That's about. what makes me nervous. Because yeah, TJ, you were hoping it was a reboot, but just as the trailer starts, it references the first one. So why would they do that for a reboot? I think they're doing that to get. I think they're doing that to get audiences that have watched it before and might be on the fence about it to come watch it. I think that's what that is for. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like talking about a Godzilla movie, the new Godzilla movie or something like that, where the new one doesn't have anything to do with the old one, but you still kind of reference it a little bit in the in the trailers and all when you're introducing it. That's what I think so it is. kind of put it in perspective. Yeah. It just, I, or something like when um, it just seems really weak to me, though. It, just it, that. Well, I, I think that's why I have hopes for it because the four women. I mean, I know that Melissa is anybody's favorite, yeah, but like I can't she stand is her. like that doesn't. Right, but the other three are pretty strong, like comedians who have like held their own out there. So like they could really pull this through. Like that doesn't bother me. It's an all female cat. That it's just it just the trailer does not look good to me well, at all yeah the, uh, the ghost in it i th- personally think look yeah excellent yeah, really you had do. the giant jack skellington from nightmare before christmas yeah. you had slimer and then when they were the subway apparitions. and uh the library yeah they look almost all the same except for slimer but they look good you gotta yeah. take they off look like from really the ghost from uh, return of the king charles lord really of the rings take off the rose colored glasses and watch the original ghostbusters oh, i know yeah. yeah i know <laughs> Seriously, I mean they yeah. they all look the same in the original Ghostbusters, right. yeah. Except for like the animatronic stuff, but most of those ghosts look look pretty much the same. Yeah. <laughs> so all of that looks good. Um, I think all of I'm not I'm not Mike, so I'm not married to all the old yeah. gadgets no. they had as much. So all of this like Ecto One looked good. The the yeah. packs and everything look fine. I will say I like the uh, I think it's the blonde chick where it shows her when uh, her packs come on and she puts her hands behind her back and pulls out like two little pistols. Mm-hmm. I did like that. I thought that was pretty badass. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't like the trap, the bear trap looking thing. I didn't yeah. like that. I doubt that'll come into play. I, I, I thought it was not. It's lasers that looks yeah. like it's going to. And the idea of it is interesting, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think that'll be. Uh, and they also kind of reveal. 
why the ghost. Well, they, they pretty much tell you why the ghosts are there. That someone has created a, a device, device to that, harness paranormal activity. Yeah. So that's what's happening now. Uh, you also got to see old uh, Chris Hemsworth mm-hmm. as the secretary. Yeah. Well, as <laughs> yes. he, he just kind of kicks like, down the door. Her. Yeah. So. But he's supposed to be the Janine. Yeah. 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 Well, they, just, the he, he kicks open the door as they're saying, "Yeah, the, this uh, the ghost can inhabit human bodies," and then yes. he kicks the door in. Yeah. So, so. Uh, implying that maybe he is. Yeah. Uh, possessed at some point uh, I don't th- I don't think that trailer if we hadn't heard anything about this and they put that trailer out I don't think we would be like oh this is a piece of shit this is a piece of garbage um, but it, like the story that we're getting so far is meh um, I, think, I, I, think I don't you, think it looks as bad as I thought it was going to look I think you hit the nail on the head on it though exactly is I don't think they know what they want it to be yeah no. yeah that's what I i'm worried about exactly i i think that's exactly it because i think there were so many I, it feels like there were so many re, uh iterations of it the like this all got kind of pushed together and that's like this is what's coming out yeah so. but i feel that they kind of that's how they did movies in the 80s maybe like if you go back and watch like Alaska, you know where they just like got a whole bunch of like crack and they or well cocaine and they would all get together and just write it all write out the movie. day yeah. and then just do it like that's what they did in the 80s but now i guess we're just our expectations are gonna be yeah our expectations of movies higher. are much much yeah. higher now and i think that's why things like ghostbusters and back to the future with all of their flaws are like so highly revered mm-hmm. um well, so I, I don't know i read an interesting article where it's saying that, like, our generation, like, while we're having this resurgence of all this, like, old stuff from the Ghostbusters and Back mm-hmm. to the Future and all that is because we, like, we're coming from a society where we're very codependent and, like, we can't take our binkies out of our mouths kind of thing. Yeah, and we, just we want have to, to re- have our nostalgia Right, and right. Like, we can't live without this nostalgia stuff. It's like our blankie that we need yeah. to hang on to. Hmm. Yeah, so. Well, that and we're really one of the first generations to have the kind of disposable income at that, our ages. That yeah, is true. To yeah. spend on this stuff well, and <laughs> access yeah we have access now yeah. like no one before yeah um, especially with the the, uh, the idea like this is a uh, within like the last three or four years the whole idea of binge watching something yeah. is it was yeah. completely newly created mm-hmm. that wasn't something that like people regularly did but no. now you can you just sit down and you for hours watch one show or all the way just through leave it yeah. on yeah yeah, yeah. And that's just a, a normal thing. So, and we have access to little. Well, uh, Charles, you're right. Let's go watch Ghostbusters again. And we don't have to say, "Do you have it? Do you yeah. have a copy of it?" Because we can find it. Yeah, we can find it yeah. anywhere. Now. Within, within, within might, two minutes, you can have it on your computer somewhere. Yeah, or exactly. on your phone, right yeah. in front of you. Like yeah. it's crazy the access. So, so yeah, I can definitely see that that being an issue. And movies, I think, have to be better. Yeah. Now, um, or worse. <laughs> well, I just think it's <laughs> or just so completely how dumb. funny, like how they threw all that crap together while they were drunk and like coked out, mm-hmm. and and yet we were holding it like it's the greatest so, yeah, thing. Yeah, like it's like, so so great. Yeah, and we're like, really. So, well, uh, let's move on from that. Stars is working on American Gods, which is a Neil Gaiman, uh, based on a Neil Gaiman book. Mm-hmm. And we just got the announcement that Ian McShane, who is one of my favorite actors from from Deadwood, he played Al Swearingen in Deadwood. He's been in tons of other stuff. He's is also going to be Game of Thrones season yes, six. Yes, he's also going to be in Game of Thrones season six. Mm-hmm. So Mr. McShane is coming along the, this year. But... um. He's going to be Mr. Wednesday. I have not read American Gods. Uh, I actually own it. I bought it a couple of couple of months ago and haven't gotten to jump into it. But from what I understand, his character is going to be the equivalent of uh, of like Odin in this world. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because Ian McShane, if you haven't watched Deadwood, I've talked about it a thousand times. His, uh, his character, Al Swearingen, is one, it's one of the best things i've ever seen on tv i rank him up with edward james almost and um ian mcshane to me are two of the most incredible tv actors that i've ever seen and i've seen them in films as well and they're just great in that as well so i'm i'm excited to see how this american gods comes 
comes across. Um, and they put a release date for it yet? Not to interrupt you. Uh, They're just see. saying it's in production. Yeah, it's in production. He is cast in it. Yeah. Um, Probably fall. I'm sure it's going to be. Yeah. It, 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 they haven't started anything on it yet if they're still casting it. Yeah, I don't have a, okay, so I don't have a date for it yet. Fall, maybe, but probably next year. Probably. Yeah. Probably next year. Um, we also got another TV show announcement. Uh, Big Hero 6 will be coming to Disney XD. Have you guys seen that? Not yet. What? Big, Big Hero, Hero 6? 6. The movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. That was really good. It, yeah, it, it was, was pretty good. Has it. I just haven't seen it yet. That was, um, because y- 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 y'all all know Loosely how I'm... based off of it. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I was going to say, y'all all know how me and Allison don't watch cartoons a oh, lot yeah. and stuff you like that. You say that. But uh, this right. one, one weekend, we went and rented the Lego Movie and this, and we watched both of them. So, I think that was the last time we watched cartoon. Uh, Peanuts. Cartoon movies. Oh, Peanuts, good point. Yeah. Which was probably the movie of the year last year, so... Um, we got another. Uh, we got an actual trailer for Finding Dory. I uh, Finding Nemo. I thought I, was fine. I saw it in theaters when it came out. Yeah. Well, what are y'all's thoughts on the actual trailer of Finding Dory? I mean, Kate? it looks funny, like Ellen DeGeneres doing her thing. But yeah. I wasn't a big fan of Finding Nemo. So what? There, I'm not saying that it was bad quality. Like it was good, mm-hmm. but I mean, I'm yeah, just it's not like. It's not one of Pixar's best, but it's yeah. it's what? serviceable. But see, I don't like no, Pixar because it makes me cry in everyone, and I'm like, yeah. eh, I don't yeah. think yeah. they distress. absolutely are. They just like great re- at that, right? And I'm yeah. like, I'm not a, I don't want to emotionally invest in a cartoon. Like, I just want to enjoy. Okay, I thought well, it was great. No, you I, thought I mean, it was great. The first one, yeah. it was good. I'm not like the quality, no. of the writing. It was I went by good, myself until the theaters. I just, I, I think they've done better. Yeah, yeah. I um, definitely saw it. And I don't know why I saw it, but I did. I think Up was better. I haven't seen Up. I think See, the first half oh, hour. Yeah. Of I mean, I, I'll be honest. I'm a dude, man. <laughs> first five minutes. You if you're, if you're, if, if you don't have tears in your eyes in the first that, five minutes, you have soul. No, 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 you have no soul. It was on uh, Netflix, and I decided to turn it on when we had bought the house. I was staying up late at night painting, and I decided to watch. You know, turn something on just to watch it while I was painting. And was just bawling my eyes yeah. out. Couldn't like couldn't paint or anything. Me and Allison weren't married yet, and I'm like text messaging her. She's asleep, and I'm just like, "Don't ever leave me!" You know, <laughs> just dying. God, that was it. Was and this so was the horrible. start of the movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is the, the first up. This is the yeah. first five ten minutes, minutes, five ten minutes. If I at the end of that say, part, if if you don't have tears, tears in your eyes at any or something. You don't, you don't have, have a soul. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it. I would say that um, <sighs> that's the only strong part of that movie, though. I didn't think the rest of it was that that great. I liked. Yeah. Um, I just liked him working to get over it. Yeah, that's true. That's that, true. That was one. Of, I that's think just, the idea of of the movie and what everything the more behind fantastic it was better. Stuff is kind yeah. of like, yeah, that's and, more for the kids. That yeah. part's more for the kids, but yeah. the, the part Under- where he's trying to get over it is the adult-oriented part yeah. of the movie. Yeah, because I, I, like, uh, every adult kind of re- it resonates with like yeah, every absolutely. adult. Absolutely, it's like in Wally, you know that that kind of Wally. Wally's good. Wally's really good. Wally's it's good. really preachy, but to, it's good. to me. It feels really preachy yeah. Yeah. about you know all the consumerism and stuff like that. But whatever. Um, we are nerds. We love to consume. So, but the, uh, but the other side of of it is, you know, um, the unrequited love and all that stuff. I do feel like out of all of the Pixar things I have seen, Finding Nemo seemed to be the most kid centric. Yeah, like, not cars. As, huh, oh, okay. I haven't, <laughs> yeah, cars I, I haven't seen cars, but uh, <laughs> it it hey, seemed cars. to be like there were less adult themes mm-hmm. in it than some of the other ones I've but, seen. Uh, we'll say, like, even though I did, I really liked Finding uh, Nemo. I just don't. Did it really need a sequel? People have been like... People love it. Oh, my God. Kids love... Oh, my teenagers at school are like yeah. so okay. excited because they grew up yeah. Finding Nemo, so they're ready for Finding Nemo. When did that movie come out? Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, 2004, 2000... Yeah, it's been a Nemo? long time. Nemo? Like, 2002, time. 2004? It had to oh have been early gosh. 2000s. 2003. 2003. Yeah. Yeah. 13 years later. the kids were born. Yeah, so the kids are like... I mean, you're really going to hit your, like, teenager yeah. demographic because they... Saw it as a kid, or really oh, excited I, about. I bet this is so calculated oh, on their side. Yeah, I just I don't see why it needed wow, to see when, when did when did the Incredibles come out? Was that two thousand four? 
Let's see. Yeah, I think it was after. I it. cannot believe it's been 12 years. The Incredibles is 2004. Yeah, I cannot believe it's been 12 years since that movie came out. I just feel and so guess what's getting the sequel here right now. But it's getting the sequel. And guess what's getting a sequel now? Incredibles. That movie should have had a sequel. Yeah. Like it should have. That's what I'm saying. Either. I bet this is calculated. Isn't it? It's so right? calculated. It's this summer or is it next summer? Next uh, summer. Yeah. This is Pixar does one movie a year. Okay. And this year it's Finding Dory. I just know people stuff I've seen on like Facebook and Twitter have been really so excited about it. this movie for like a year. People like they love announced it when they announced Pixar. it a year ago. They were just like going crazy about Allison's it. Allison's favorite thing is to talk about how uh, Nathan is such a Pixar pussy. <laughs> um, so yeah. people love their fucking P- Pixar. Yeah, I just uh, don't I used, like it. I, I used like to Pixar. take Josh every year to Pixar movie. The last mm-hmm. one we went to see was, um, I think it was Wally. Which that was a tradition that we great. had that me and Josh had, and then I kind of let that one go. Oh. Well, now you can go see Fine and Dory. Yeah. Start it up again. Mm. Uh, so, we also, so January 13th, 2017, this will be a month after Rogue One comes out. Really excited about this because that is the date that the Dark Towers movie will come out. Oh yeah, and we got a. Is it in stone? It is coming out that date. That's the date that they have it in right now. Okay, no, Matthew McConaughey is confirmed for, for Roland. The, no. no, no, for who? For Man, Man in Black. Black. Oh, and Man Roland Black. is going to be uh, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Oh. Idris Elba. Elba. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So, um, that's oh, pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, now I want to go back and reread them first. Uh, I haven't read them yet. I have all and of them. And I know reading. that they will. I I actually found all of them for a quarter each at a Goodwill. So <laughs> My I mom bought them for me in high school for not a quarter. So yeah. Sure. yeah. Don't tell Vicky. Mm. So, this is magic and gunslingers so i know uh-huh. this is right up my, it's one of those that i've been wanting to read forever i've had it i've just kind of kept it in my back pocket waiting for the perfect time i have I, all the graphic so novels for it too i have a lot of them yeah. i stopped reading it when i was in i think when right before i went in the army which was when the fourth book came out Okay. That's when I stopped reading it. I'm, I'm like, I'm actually waiting for my turn in book club. Yeah, because this is Dark Towers is one of the ones that I'm going, going to put for. And, and I was which like, one else? The first one. Okay. And yeah. then the that next, shorter, the, yeah. we we vote on them, so we put three forward. So I'm gonna put uh, the Dark Towers, um, Office ninety seven for dummies, and <laughs> <laughs> very good. I'm still working on this week's. But yeah, I stopped because I was like, I'm not going to. He's either going to die before he finishes it. Because I think that was the year he got hit by the van. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, he's not going to finish it, and I'm going to be pissed off. And, or he's going to take forever to finish. I, I Basically, I feel like a Game of Thrones fan feels now. Yeah. I felt that then. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've been tempted to do a whole misery thing with George R. R. Martin, so he disappears. <laughs> Nobody come check my house. No. <laughs> I'll be was, breaking his ankles. If George R. R. Martin disappears, everyone, it was not Katie. Do you yeah, have a not Katie. to put him in your house? <laughs> right? She has a hole in her house. Trying to use Rubens to get him. What? The dude's Rubens. fat. The dude is huge. Yeah, that's what I mean, it's not like I'm any of us are spell, you know? I'm just Turn worried he's going to die of like heart disease before he yeah, finishes. Absolutely, it. Yeah. or old age, or or just being a captain of a ship or something. <laughs> yeah, or he'll just probably get Game of Thrones. He'll die off. Yeah, he'll die yeah. off. Someone sell him. Someone I heard bust that in his house. house. I heard yeah, he's got everything mapped out just in throat. case. But I'll make him speed it up. I mean, <laughs> live action rings. Or they'll crush his head. This is one of this is one of the most <laughs> exciting. Um, this is definitely going to be a franchise, but it's not right now. Yeah. So this is one of the most exciting announcements that I, I, I think we've heard. I've heard movies. some other rumors that there that Ron Howard's still keeping that little thing on the back burner that he was wanting to do. I thought he left. No, he's still, oh, he's still attached to it. it. He's still attached to it. As oh, a so, doing, uh, so doing the movies, the couple TV shows or seasons. Yeah, and then, that's why they casted yourself as Roland because they have another younger actor that kind of. Looks like him and everything that they might mm-hmm. have for prequels because this is supposedly, from what I was reading, it's going to start more towards the middle of the story okay. and yeah, not start. I was wondering Dark how Tower. they were going to do because yeah. there's so many ways you could go with yeah. it. Yeah, and um, yeah, that sounds confusing. Stephen King himself has said that like 
fans are going to be really mad, but if they'll give it a chance, they're going to love it. So yeah, I'm I'm I okay with them. the casting. Yeah, I think the casting is great. The, oh, yeah. the the biggest problem I have with with the casting is because of Susanna uh, later on, and that because that was a big point of contention was Roland and uh, Eddie were all were both white guys, and then yeah. she's a yeah, she's a black I woman agree. and she's disabled and everything. And she came from like the civil rights era. That probably just won't come up. No, they they said they'd address it, but they've changed the way it's addressed. Okay. I don't know how how exactly, I but I don't Maybe know. She's a robot. But I'm excited to see what they do about those lobster things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know nothing I about those. Oh, so. you need to yeah, it's, at the the very, it's at the very beginning of the book yeah, of, the, of the first book. No, 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 the lobster. Is it or is it the very the end? The Gunslinger is the first one. Yeah. No, he, it's in the second one, I think. It's at the very beginning of the second, second one? Second one, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's right. Goes, yeah. Yep, that's right. You're right. Oh, I love. I recommend that series to all my high schoolers yeah, all the time. I, and I they just look at me like crazy. And I have it, so I'm going to read oh, it. So. It's so yeah. I only had one student that took me up on it, and she read like all seven cool. in like two months. Wow. I know it'll take me at least 12 it, years to read <laughs> them. So. Well, it took him longer than that to write it, so, yeah. so I'll be all right. Yeah. It's so good. Oh. So we announced last week that we have uh, someone for Iron Fist, the mm-hmm. uh, the actor that will portray Iron Fist in the new Netflix Marvel series Iron Fist. Yeah, I forgot his name. Um, well, it's, uh, it's not important. You it's got- Loris from Game yeah. of Thrones. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but I know you, okay. you know who you're talking you about. You won't know it until he gets here. Yeah. Uh, Just like Kristen listen. Ritter and... Uh, she was yeah. in Breaking Bad. I still don't remember the guy that played the, the, the Daredevil. Finn Jones. Charlie Cox. Finn yeah. Jones, sorry. Yeah. Finn Jones, that's right. So, um, the, everyone was pissed that it wasn't an Asian guy, and mm-hmm. everyone else that wasn't pissed had said, well, if there was going to be an Asian guy, you should have Shang-Chi. He's yep. actually Asian. Guess what? They're gonna, they're casting for Shang-Chi, and I'm excited about it, because I think that, that will be a great addition to what they're doing on Netflix. And there's a possibility that he, a possibility that he'll get a spinoff series from it. So, okay, so he is going to be he's with, included with the Iron Fist one, right? Yes, okay. he's in Iron Fist. Because so. the way it's not like you're saying he was but, there was Iron Fist show and then no, the Shang Chi. No, no, okay, no. so like, I'm going to be yet. I'm going to well, be 100 yeah. percent disappointed if we don't get a Power Man and Iron Fist series duo show. Yeah, yeah. Duo show at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think they already missed the boat by not going ahead and just doing that together. Yeah, but I see why they wouldn't. But uh, they've got to. Yeah. I want, I really, really, what I really want is them to do Defenders, and then, um, because I was the Hulk, so, Silver Surfer, yes, Doctor yes, and um, Namor. <laughs> <laughs> what I, what I was really disappointed about was, um, at the end of Jessica Jones, I thought she was going to say something about being a hero for hire, and that never happened, but I want Defenders to become heroes for hire. I was kind of disappointed that her lawyer at the end of that wasn't Matt Murdock. Mm-hmm. That was, I yeah. was really disappointed. Or at least, that. um. Or foggy, Jessica. Um, Jen- no, Jennifer. Um, she Hulk. What's her name? Jennifer. Jennifer Walters. Kale Walters. Yeah. Why can I not think of her name? I love it when Jennifer Walters is the in the Marvel universe is the lawyer for people and stuff, which yeah. she was in the uh, trial of Charles Xavier, which was great. So Shang Chi is going to be in Netflix. I'm excited about it. And the last piece of news that we have that will lead us into uh, our next discussion. Is um, ne- uh, Netflix? Sorry, Nickelodeon has announced that they're going to be bringing back Legends of the Hidden Temple and Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold's going to be a two-part movie. Um, I guess to kind of finish up their storyline. And funny enough, uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple is not going to be a game show. It's going to be a movie based on. No, I was excited. No, I, I think it would be cool is if the Hey Arnold thing was like a sequel, kind of like they're doing with Fuller House and Boy yeah. and Girl Meets World and yeah. stuff like that. I think that would be a more interesting take on it. I don't. I'm not sure. I, like I, a friend of mine's really in Hey Arnold. I never watched it. Yeah, neither did I. And he talked about how it was like, uh, like there was a. I think it was after my time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So y'all, yeah, none of y'all like, have watched. I think it kids I babysat yeah, okay. for watched it, but like I didn't really. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, because he had he had acted like that it was a it ended kind of on a cliffhanger, so they'll be able to finish that out. So I'm not real. Into it, I don't I think know a whole lot about it. We're going to sacrifice him to the devil or something like that. Well, see, like then that. I would watch and, it. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah. So Netflix is bringing back our uh, Netflix. I'm <laughs> Nickelodeon. <laughs> Nickelodeon's going to bring back some of it. Oh no! Somebody get the steel chair. 
It is time for Charles's Wrestling Corner. Here it is. You've waited all week for it. That's right. You have. On the edge of your seat. Get nothing but action. <laughs> action I'm going to start talking. Charles's Wrestling Corner. I'm going to hit somebody with my chair. Oh, you're going to be a slobber knocker. Take it away. Somebody stop the damn segment. <laughs> uh, damn it, you guys just threw me off completely. <laughs> Jesus, Charles, we, we I know. can't keep handing you some I know, balls. I know. You got to um, take us over at some point. I know. Uh, <clears throat> a couple things real quick. Uh, going to go with uh, talks from the Hall of Fame that they're going to be doing this year with WrestleMania 32. Uh Sting was the first introduct or first person introdu- inducted inducted into it this year. Ric Flair is going to uh, put him in the Hall of Fame because he was a big rival when they were in uh, NWA and WCW. Uh, they announced their third induction into the Hall of Fame this year. It's going to be the Fabulous Freebirds. I know nothing about the Fabulous Freebirds. I don't believe the Plus Leonard Skinner. Uh, I, that I okay. do know about. Yeah. One thing about them, they were. One of the first groups in wrestling, in general, that actually had entrance music. Really? Yes. Oh, so they're that. They old. actually played. They had Leonard Skinner playing their theme. Was their theme music? Oh, okay. And it was a. Uh, I thought they might be something from the nineties that I didn't know about. No, they're, they're way old. Like uh, late seventies and uh, early eighties. I'm gonna look them up while you're talking. Yeah. Uh, the original group was. God, I can't remember the third one. I think it was Buddy Rogers, and Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Michael PSAs. They're pretty much known for their feuds with in WCCW with the Von Ericks. Okay. And because of them, they've instituted a term or a rule, which is called the Freebird Rule. When they won the tag team titles, they won it as the Freebird, so any combination of three could hold the belts and wrestle. So it kind of threw their opponents off. Other teams have done that throughout the years, but the Freebirds were the first ones to do it. Very charismatic. People hated them, and you paid to see them get their ass kicked, and people got their money's worth. That was one of the things that uh, Michael Hayes was known for, giving the fans their money. I remember these guys. Yeah, well, I remember I, seeing them. Which incarnation? Is that... Oh, I don't know. Because there's one with um, PSAs and Jimmy Garvin. Okay. Which is probably the one you're looking at. Maybe. But regardless, and the last thing was the passing of uh, Aija Izaki, known as Hayabusa. Yeah. Yeah, that was the big news. Yeah, that wasn't any self-inflicted, wasn't overdose or anything. The guy, he died from a hemorrhage in his brain at, I think it was 46. Oh, man. He was... uh, Holy crap. Oh, it gets better. I think it was 2001. He crippled himself in the ring. He botched a moonsault off the second rope. You just talked about this last week or the week before, didn't you? Uh, No, it was uh, Daniel Bryan retired from concussions. Uh, No, no, no. I thought you brought up him messing Mm -mm. up. No? No. Pretty much goes for a moonsault, hits his head on the mat, rolls his head back under his body, paralyzed. Last year at his show in Tokyo, he walked for the first time. But he's pretty much he's known for his work in FMW, which is a uh, frontier uh, martial arts wrestling run by uh, uh, Atsushi Onita. A lot of death matches, like just matches with barbed wires exploding, barbed wire that's cage stuff, matches. That's where Mick Foley went to, wasn't it? Didn't he IWA. To, he went to IWA. It was uh, the rival company in Japan. Pretty much just like yeah. ultra violent, like Japanese equivalent of ECW. Yeah. But worse. Um, notable matches. Uh, the one with uh, Atsushi Onita exploding cage death match. And in, I think it was 97 or 96, it was Hayabusa and Jinsei Shizaki who people who watched WWF in the early Attitude, or before the Attitude Era, wrestled as Hakushi. It was those two versus Rob Van Dam and Sabu for the ECW Tag Team titles. It was one of the better matches that ECW had put on up until that point, and some argue probably one of the better matches they've ever had. He was an innovator of <clears throat> uh, quite a few moves, the Falcon Arrow. It's pretty much it's a vertical suplex that he drops them down, or he just throws them down in front of him, and the Phoenix Splash, which I can't explain, but <laughs> it look sounds at, glorious, though. It, dude, it's it's crazy what he did with it, but 
just look it up on YouTube. Just type in Phoenix Splash and just be amazed by it. All right. Is that All right. it? That is. That's Charles Wrestling yeah. Corner this week. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Charles. And Welcome, guys. We're going to come back and we're going to discuss some of our favorite shows on Nickelodeon. There yeah. we go. And we're going to skip something in the news. What are we skipping? Guardians Volume 2 for the second week. Oh, get over it. Oh, come All on. All the casting things. Yeah, for that. Okay, so no, we, we all Charles, is, Charles is upset because um, last we stop, week... Hey, hey, we need to stop the, the wrestling yeah, corner I'll stop music. It. Okay. Thank you. So Charles is upset because last week we got a casting that was meh. Um, we never mentioned Kurt Russell. I yeah, love, we have. We mentioned Kurt Russell. We mentioned Kurt Russell. No. Yeah, we, we With those dreamy it. blue eyes. And um, mm-hmm. this week's uh, there yeah, are me and Katie are on the same page on that one. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. I do not remember us talking about Guardians. It was probably when you were taking a nap over there. Yeah, <gasps> <laughs> oh, you're um, shaking your head so much, exercising. No, your we were neck. talking about his mustache <laughs> from Hateful Eight. Maybe, mm. but uh, S- uh, Sly Stallone is rumored to be in the uh, the new Guardians. It's just a rumor right now. Yeah. He hasn't actually been cast. Uh, someone saw him. Coming out of a hotel that the people from Guardians are staying in, carrying what they said was a script, and getting into a car that is normally for Mr. Pratt. Yeah. So, um, it may or may not be anything, but we'll uh, we'll see. Yes. So, yeah. That, it's weird. Uh, Slice Stallone in a Marvel movie is kind of weird, so yeah. we'll see. I'm interested. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, mean, uh, I mean, having him be an extra character, like, like in Star Wars, they had a lot of like extra people that were... Actually, famous people that yeah. were in Star Wars, like Daniel Craig, exactly being a stormtrooper, Simon Pegg, Simon Pegg mm-hmm. being that. So, I mean, it could be something like that. That would be fun to start seeing that kind of stuff yeah. show up. Yeah, uh, just as other Easter eggs. That's, that's how Samuel L. Jackson got in the prequels. Is it? Yeah he he asked to be in the prequels, and um, he's like, I'll be a stormtrooper. I'll be whatever. He just wanted to be in it because he was that he big just of a fan. To be somewhere in it. Yeah, like I'll be just random stormtrooper yeah. number eight over here, and um, number he said, eight. He thinks he can be that high on the list. Yeah, <laughs> and um, so he was as shocked as anybody when they came up to him with the little box of lightsabers. They're like, "Hey, guess what? You're going to be a Jedi now." Yeah, they're like, <laughs> "Pick a color." No, they didn't say pick a color. They said pick a handle. There were two yeah. handles yeah. gone out of the box, and that was from Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson. The, he got the third one out of the box. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. So that's yeah. what Charles is upset to get into Star about. Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. everybody out there know that I want to be a stormtrooper so yeah. I can get yeah. into the next Star Wars. L- listen, JJ. Nurse Katie get wants you to know that I'll be a stormtrooper in the next Star Wars. I'm well, not doing the next one. So I want to be. Not, I'll be. Yeah. I'll still be involved. Oh, yeah. grandson. Yeah. In the, <laughs> I'll be part of the new mom. movies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to come back and we're going to have our segment. Our Nickelodeon segment. All right. So as we mentioned earlier, we're going to uh, talk about Nickelodeon shows mm-hmm. uh, from yeah. its heyday. Yeah. If you were a kid during the eighties or nineties, yeah. You, I, I feel you had like, a channel. Yeah, you yeah. watched Nickelodeon. Yeah, uh, I didn't have cable as a kid or satellite or anything. <laughs> Neither did I. But my dad at his work office, which was a welding shop, uh, I would stay up there during the days, and uh, he had cable up there. So during the day, we would watch some Nickelodeon on a black yeah. and white TV. On a black and white TV, <laughs> sweet. When cable boxes had the little knob that you turned. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Man, so, we're going back now. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. <sighs> no remote control, kids. No. no. <laughs> actually, there were. Actually, yes, there was a remote yes, control. Yes, there was. Boy, go turn the channel. Yep. <laughs> it was, yeah. I was usually the remote control. Fortunately, I had a younger brother, so he was the remote control. No, I still was the remote Justin. control. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, growing up during this time, this was probably, like you said, the heyday yeah. of Nickelodeon big time. Oh, yeah. This is when MTV is just showing up on the scene and playing really music big, videos. Actually, playing yes. music videos. Yes, uh, Nickelodeon was so uh, I, revolutionary, definitely 
but the the sh- the programming they were putting on was completely centered towards kids. And but it wasn't dumbed down. It wasn't no. dumbed down, but it was um it was a little bit on that like uh, during the you know 80s and 90s it was kind of like it was wholesome almost. No, I, I wasn't no. going to say wholesome. It was uh-huh. more like it's uh, very edgy. Yeah, more like eat your shorts Bart Simpson kind of attitude right. like yeah. you know kids are better than adults, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um the things you want to smack a kid for nowadays. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think it was well, focused now. towards tweens. Well, like I'm, I'm, 11 to 14 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is where kids are at their brattiest, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's... Well, debatable, well, really. Yeah. I think they stay All in that children. stage from... <laughs> from about three to Two. about 22. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. until they move out on their own, finally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so are like, oh, I was so wrong. You, yeah. you may notice that we have a uh, another new voice. Uh, my wife, Allison, is on with us for this segment because she said... Oh dang! You're talking about Nickelodeon. She I'm an expert. To, yeah, she really. had to be on it. This she is our local Nickelodeon expert here, so we brought her in on this. But uh, yeah, lo, let's just jump into it. What were some of your favorite shows for Nickelodeon, Charles? Not really. Uh, I always, I honestly, I like Mr. Wizard's World. It was yeah. just fun. It was like it was pretty much was like science fair every morning. I would watch it before I came to work or not work, but before I went to school. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. But he was just like, it was like Charles just simple. Been cutting meat a long time. A long time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very tired. But it was just like, just little, like he would do little science experiments with like just different kids that would be on the show. There was all these different scientific facts and it was like, it was really interesting. Yeah. And it was like, that was literally my daily routine when I was getting ready to go to school was my mom would stop watching the news, put it on Nickelodeon and it was like right before it went off the air and it was <sighs> Mr. Wizard's World. And I feel like that was one of the few like shows on Nickelodeon where you actually learned something. Yeah, it was informative. Yeah. But Man. looking back on it now, you can find it on YouTube. He was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, it, it I was, feel sorry for you because when I was going to school, yes, it was Mr. Ed. No, no. <laughs> He-Man, Thundercats, G.I. Joe, Transformers. I would get Thundercats sometimes in my no room. Sometimes. That was, sometimes. That was the four shows before I went to school every day. I'm like... <laughs> and mine was like Barney. <laughs> I don't, there were, your life sucked. There were cartoons. I'm just a lot more like... I'm a lot younger than all of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There I were mean, not I, cartoons. I, just, I get those, but it's... I just I watched Mr. Wizard's Man, I was, I was straight up 80s kid. Yeah. I was I've going to school. I've never heard of Mr. Wizard. I was ready to blow dudes away. Really? And- <laughs> never. I just looked it up. <laughs> And I sort of recognize like the the screenshots of the TV show. You know, it reminds I don't me remember of it. It's like, um, like, like the Bill show. Nye. No, you remember You're, like the old, like the cheesy like videos you had to watch in school. Yeah, yeah. I would have, contact. Like, the, I would have like the <laughs> <laughs> like the yeah. graphic of a, that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, I, was, I enjoyed it. It was like it was always no, fun. That to was watch. a good. Anytime I got yes. to watch it, it was it was good. Mm-hmm. All of these shows from this time era were at the time like i said revolutionary and they're yeah. good so mm-hmm. yeah all right so katie um i really liked clarissa explained it all or explains it all because it's like cool. on melissa Jeff Hart. Uh, clarissa was she so was cool well right? it, it was mostly because she was really good at explaining things she could just <laughs> explain it all it's right there yeah, yeah, I recently wrote a blog post about fictional bedrooms, and hers was that. on the list because it was so cool. They had like the best colors. Yeah, she was so cool. Funny. She just turned to the TV and talked straight to the TV like she was. When she had a pet alligator in her bedroom. What? I never watched Clarissa. No, and boys. Well, yeah, but I, mean, I guess maybe. the equivalent would have been for me Doogie Howser when I was maybe. a kid. Maybe, yeah. Okay, but um. Allison tried to get me to watch it recently because I get is it on Hulu? Maybe I think it's it's available on Hulu. Yes, and it was it's terrible, painful really painful <laughs> to try to watch. Which I imagine most of these, sh- mo- maybe not all, but most of these shows yeah. are going to be painful to go back and watch. Yeah, um, yes, they are. But it's wh- fun to watch for nostalgic purposes yes, yes. for me, but it is really terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Be, which I was not. <laughs> So as as a fan of the show now it's it's bad to watch now. I mean, 
If you're 11, it is great to watch. I was say, you watched it when it was out, when it first came out, right? Yeah. When and I was a kid, it was awesome. It, it's, really nice. Yeah, and yeah. as a adult, you're I like, nah. wouldn't watch it. You know, if I hadn't watched it as a child, I wouldn't watch it now. It didn't some, age well. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what I was going to say. Stuff, some of this stuff, though, like... Um, well, the two that I was going to mention were uh, Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy. Mm-hmm. Um, Timeless. Ren and Stimpy is just one of those shows that you you look at now and you're like, how in the world was this on in the afternoons for kids? <laughs> a- a- as a parent now, I, I look mm-hmm. at it that way. I'm like, who did this? Who who let this go on? Because I think they there's so many lines that they skirted. Oh, yeah. And they just came right to the edge of a lot of really like specifically Dirty. Ren and Stimpy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, specifically um, Ren Rugrats and Stimpy. Rugrats, like, no, no, yeah. Rugrats wasn't that way. But but Ren and Stimpy, um, it was gross out. A few years, yeah, definitely. Yeah. A few years ago, I don't know. But it was, what it was, on, was it on Netflix or something? Oh yeah, yeah. and it was it was what I th- no. yeah I th- absolutely it, not. And I think it was one of the first times. Um, like they had the freedom to really do that and be like, boys think boogers and farts are funny. Yep. Yes, and pimples. Re- yeah, let's and poop. Re- yeah, and poop. Yeah, let's really do this up. And Very they armpits. sure, yeah, they sure did. Yes, um, <laughs> the graphic yes, they close-ups did. they would do. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, they, they're <laughs> still gross. They still, they still do them in like SpongeBob so and stuff like that. They yeah. still do those so kind of graphic great. close-ups on yeah. things. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, uh, I think it was on Netflix, it came on Netflix or something like that, and they just started. I I didn't really get to watch a lot of Ren and Stimpy when I was when I was younger, but they went through all of them and they just loved it. It was Darren when we were living at the apartment. He was just he would just go through them. No. That's and because he still, grew up going to Christian school. Well, maybe I did, and then and I watched Ren and Stimpy. No, but you didn't watch Ren and Stimpy as a twenty. Three year old or something. Oh no! And then um, <laughs> I would now. Uh, Rugrats yeah. was the other one, and I'm. I like I've Rugrats. Had, I didn't have as much of an exposure to that as I did Ren and Stimpy when I was younger, but I have had more of an exposure to it recently because my kids watch it, mm-hmm. and it's it's pretty smart. It's a pretty it's, smartly written yeah. show. Mm-hmm. It's about babies, but it's a there's a it's. And that's what's really nice about these Nickelodeon shows. They were they were written intelligently. They weren't like we were saying. They weren't dumbed down. They I were wonder, written to their audience. I wonder because we talk about that with like Pixar things and stuff like that. I wonder if this was one of the first places where that could actually happen. Because I know that that Maybe. happened in other cartoon shows, sort of. Well, I mean, Looney Tunes yeah. did it back in the '30s, but those were written for adults. The, those yeah. jokes are adult driven. Uh, the the slapstick stuff is what got the kids interested in it, but those are adult jokes that are going on in those cartoons. Yeah. Um, but this was these were shows that were written for that tween audience or that preteen tween audience, and they they really had a handle on who they were writing for. That's what I, that's what I think is amazing about that. And you had ten years at least. Of that kind of content, which is really amazing to me, that you can keep yeah. writers on something and keep them on point that long. Okay, Ray. Um, well, one of the because we're talking about sm- uh, smartly written shows that adults can enjoy. Uh, Adventures of Pete and Pete was Whoa. incredible. Yes. Um, and so going good. back, I, uh, going back recently and. Yeah, within the last five years or so, we watched a. Yeah, I feel we like we watched our first year of marriage. Probably, probably. Um, just some of the things like uh, the ridiculousness of like Artie, the strongest man in the world, and mm-hmm. this is my brother. Th- I'm Pete, and this is my I'm brother good. Pete. Yeah. And um, what's um, Petunia? Petunia. And all the villains in it, like Open Face and Pit Stains, mm-hmm. and yeah. all of that stuff was so genius. Mom's but, um, plate. Yeah. Yeah, but then they also had guest stars like Selma Blair, LL Cool J, uh, I think, not David Bowie, but, uh, man, oh, Michael Stipe was on it, 
Um, yeah. yeah, there were t- uh, tons of people like that that were. You'd be um, amazed who shows up in kids well, shows. Well, I think that yeah. was also the beginning of Michelle Trachtenberg, who was later Harriet the Spy, and she was Dawn in Buffy, and then she was also in Gossip Girl, one of my favorite shows. So uh, there were uh, the music in it was like really, it's a recurring theme really there. good. Yeah. Um. And like all the episodes were so well written. Yeah, they were really um, one funny. of my one of my favorite episodes was the one where they um, what was it? They tried to stay up for for like for daylight savings. Yeah, for like forever or something. <laughs> they were just gonna stay awake for yeah. a long, long time. Yeah. I don't remember what the exact like goal was. <laughs> I think one of them decided they like the youngest peep decided he wasn't gonna sleep anymore because when he slept, he didn't get to do things. So uh, he just stayed awake and like got crazy and stuff like that. So it, it just just really good writing to I'm it. Looking for Mister Frosty. Yes, yes, that the, was the like, ice was cream it Mr. one. Yeah, that was yeah. a really good one. Man, that one, that yeah, that one was so. They were so odd. I yeah. think that's a lot of the someone the, weird wrote those episodes. Yeah. and that was the thing. Like a lot of these uh, shows, like Ren and Stimpy, they were odd they were really weird yeah and we're at the time i i was probably you know i was probably a teen not a preteen. so um i was awkward i was weird and i was <laughs> awkward and these shows were weird and awkward different than i was but still i think that's one of the connections yeah that i got uh, that as, as a kid like they were great at because uh yeah I definitely got that. Have, have any of y'all watched Pete and Pete ever? I have no, no. idea what the show is. I honestly oh. think it's one of the smartest shows on Nickelodeon that they've I ever had. I think there may only be two or three seasons. Yeah, there's very few seasons. Three and a special. He was on... Oh. Yeah. Or a cousin, brother or cousin. I think okay. he's a cousin. Well, and, and it's a show where... There's two redheaded kids that are brothers, and the youngest brother has a tattoo of a lady on his arm that he would make dance and stuff by just. But he was ten. He was ten. Yeah, (laughs) and he had a tattoo. So it's it's weird. It's a weird thing. Um, it's a weird show, but it is. If you've never, it definitely stands the test of time, and is still. Yeah. Like we talked about, Ren and Stimpy. You can still go watch it, and it's still good. This one is also really good. Yeah, if you're a boy. Okay, so that's one of mine. All right, Allison, you're batting clean up. Um, well, I would say salute your shorts. I, I love salute your shorts. I, it's hilarious. It's about a couple of kids that are at a camp, a, a never-ending summer camp. Mm. Um, and it is so funny. Has anyone else seen this? I've no. <laughs> salute your shorts was um when salute your shorts came on. That meant uh my dad had already closed up the shop. Or was about to. So <laughs> I knew, like, we're about to go home. And most of the time, I didn't get to finish all the episodes. But when I did, it was a treat. Yeah. The Salute Your Shorts was good. It was really good. Um, and another one I really enjoyed was the classic Are You Afraid of the Dark? Which, to me, I was no. really young at the time. Probably, like, 8 to 11 years old. And I was really, really scared. Of Are really You Afraid creepy. of the Dark? It was really scary. Like goosebumps creepy? No, scarier than goosebumps. <laughs> um, I, and there were a, a couple of seasons of that, maybe four or five, and it was really scary. Um, another one that hasn't been mentioned is Doug. I think you were going to yeah, talk about I was, that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, Doug was one of the uh, cartoons that. Um, I don't. I I guess at some point it got sold off to Disney. Yeah, yes. It showed up on ABC. Uh, at there some were point. two seasons, maybe three, of Doug on Nickelodeon, and yeah. then Disney bought it. And it didn't come on the Disney Channel, but it came on ABC. Okay, Family. That's Kid when I caught morning. it. The yeah. actual, yeah. Morning, the actual yeah. episodes that were on um, Nickelodeon were. I think they changed voice actors and stuff. There was a stuff. noticeable difference. Yeah, there was a noticeable difference, and I can't. I can't definitely say whether it was better or worse i didn't watch it but i heard i i i I guess i read articles or something like that i remember 
reading about the change in the tone and the way the episodes Absolutely. were entirely yeah. from when they were on Nickelodeon to when they went they to ABC. Different. Yeah, and and I love the the early ones, um, especially things with like uh, his favorite band was the Beats, which was a play on the Beatles, but they were like a rock band during the 90s. And they played and a song called Killer, Killer Tofu. Killer Tofu was their hit song. <laughs> ooh, wee, ooh, Killer, Killer Tofu. Tofu. Oh, gosh. And like, th- I think the f- maybe the first episode ever uh, was him having to go out and catch nematodes. Yeah, he had just moved to town, to yeah. Bluffington. Bluffington, yeah. And he was tricked into going to find nematodes. And, which which is exist. funny because a nematode, <laughs> no, a nematode is an actual thing, but it's like a very microscopic worm. Um, so it's probably a word that they thought was funny, <laughs> and then just used it. Um, but there was when he was, was Quill Man. Yeah, when he was Quill Man, oh, yeah. it was great. Remember he's the, in love with Patty Manning. The yes. premise is that uh, he would name? he would write in his journal every episode, and he would talk about what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so every episode would start out with "Dear Journal," blah blah blah. Yeah. Because oh, so he had these. That different- was Doogie Howser. <laughs> and he had a dog named Pork Chop. Yes, he that did. That was the name. And yeah. he, he also had a spy, like a James Bond kind of character that he would Smash do as Adams. well. Smash Adams. Yeah. So like, it was really good. It wasn't one of these. It wasn't a like gross out thing like Rocco's Modern Life or like uh, mm-hmm. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. But it was just really good. I think everybody knows the theme song. Like if they hear it, they like do 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 do. Yeah. Do you remember that kid I had that looked exactly like Doug? Like I took a picture of him and showed you one time because I think so. Because he dressed up as someone. It's so eerie. It was so eerie. Yeah, Doug. I loved it. All right. Great. Anything else, Alice? Uh, well, Rocco's Modern Life, you brought that up. I watched that. I also loved Hey Arnold. Um, yeah. Rocco's I know that you guys Modern about Life is one that I kind of want to go and watch because yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about that. I feel like it's a little bit less gross out than it is. Ren and Stimpy. It is. But it's still on that same level. And it's still, from what I remember, what I've seen little parts of, it's still like pretty smart. Yeah. yeah, I think it is because it's referred it to is. a lot later on, like in like pop culture, people refer to Rock or Rock yeah. or Modern Life as something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's was. Uh, the now here's another term. question: Do you guys think there are any shows out there nowadays that are written as smartly as some of that? I think for kids. I, yes, Ooh. I think I know of at least one that is. But we'll what, go. what was that one? Phineas and Ferb. Ooh, yeah. See, I'm out. I I know you have more experience watching it because you have kids. I just I will watch it when I the don't. kids aren't there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will too. Like that's when I got into from babysitting kids and yeah. watching it, and then I started watching it on my own. But that so is good. that is a really it's a really smartly written show. Great music. Almost every episode has this just crazy musical number that just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, and it's it's, it's a good. really good show. It's really smart, like yeah. for their age. I like it. Well, is is it a Disney show? It is. I think it is. It is a Disney show, yeah. but it's it's, it's good. very good. Yeah, I don't know of any. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't watch a lot of kids TV. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, crap. again, like yeah, back most is stuff crap. is garbage. Well, but also Uncle Grandpa is oh. probably one of the worst no. things I've ever seen what? in my life. What about Ubi? <laughs> that is you, that's, you dropped that's, that preschool? you mentioned that once. Yeah, that's that's a. That's a pre preschool show, mm-hmm. and it it is still the worst thing I've ever seen on television. I, I saw like five minutes of it. I said no. Yeah, I okay. just I, I came home from work one day and my kids were watching. I'm like, no, no, this is not happening anymore. I don't. So, and I heard, but but they're staying quiet and watching. I'm like, no, you find something else. I'm not putting my kids. <laughs> That's through why this. you only they only are allowed to watch my cartoons at the house. Like yeah. it's got to be like, in the no. 80s or 90s, or they can't watch it because it's so bad. Well, uh, yeah. I think that's one of the differences with us. Uh, again, the way society is now, we can completely. You can go on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, whatever. Uh, HBO is about to have um, Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Like you can pick now. Back when I was a kid. Back oh, when no, there was no picky. There was no, no picky. You, you, know, you, you, you pick you a change channel. The channel. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there was at if you were lucky, you might yeah. have had two televisions in the house. Yeah, maybe. Well, and we had but most of the time. 
it's TV in the living room, and yep. it's whatever mom and dad are yeah. watching. And yeah. like I said, uh, we had it up at my my dad's shop, and that's where we stayed after school or during the summers. And we had cable, and we had, I think it was 35 television yeah, 35 stations. Yeah, think channels. about so, yeah. Yes. yes. 35 whole stations. It might have been like 25. Um, but like, Only one 24-hour news channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you only had C-SPAN and CNN. Yeah. And um, I had a lot of I don't even remember C SPAN being on there. No, it was CNN, C- I think. C- I think it was CNN. CNN was definitely on this one. But um yeah, so I could watch I guess it was ABC would have like gargoyles or oh, Duck gargoyles Tales. was so good. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Tales. And then you would have um Disney would have stuff on and Nickelodeon, and that was the options that I had. Yeah. And yeah. most of the time I would end up watching Matlock. So <laughs> <laughs> I did too. <laughs> yeah. Joe's pretty How good, honestly. You? We had like five channels until I was in like yeah. middle school. So oh, like, yeah, being, oh, no. being at, now if we talk about when I was at home, I had three channels. Yeah, that, so at home it was like I watched uh, Wood, Woody Woodpecker. Mm-hmm. Um, before Georgia I was Farm Report. Georgia before Farm I was Report. sixteen, we had one channel. We were able to get channel twelve in on the antenna if we twisted yep. it yes. just twisted right. Yep. And During a certain point in the day, they got night. it was Channel Twelve because that was our local source of Next Generation. Oh, good! Yeah. It's the only nice. like relevant yes. show we I got to get. watch as a kid. Yeah, yeah. You every guys Saturday had night. Terrible childhood <laughs> because a, I had hundreds a, of channels. <laughs> on a good day, if <laughs> oh. the antenna was just right and there are no clouds we, in the sky, <laughs> we might <laughs> might could get Channel Thirty in and be able to watch Ninja Turtles. Yes, like we actually had a relay system. For how to outside, my dad would stand turning the antenna. <laughs> we had somebody at the window and somebody inside watching the TV. Oh yeah, there, there, stay there. No, don't let go. But you gotta stay there and hold it. That sounds like a rough life. I played yeah. outside a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to read a lot. My, I, I watched a lot of Disney Channel. My feet were so callous I could run through the woods barefoot. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, I would like to know, what is everyone else's out there in podcast land? What's your favorite yeah. Nickelodeon show? Yeah. Let us Especially know. Especially you, Brian Marshall. Brian Marshall. And you, yeah. Anthony. Yeah. I would love a, a two-page essay on what your favorite, your favorite <laughs> Nickelodeon <laughs> show we didn't do any mailbag questions. I know we're running late. Oh, yeah. But there were absolutely no mailbag questions oh. this week. There were none. There wasn't a single question sent to us on mailbag. There was. I, I could I thought there was. Or maybe I was Hold looking on. at last week's. Maybe, uh, maybe you're reading last the, week's. Maybe you're not reading the, the same Facebook page that I was reading. Hold on. Nerds who get late all the times? <laughs> oh, that's my I other website. I don't read that one. Thank <laughs> you. Um, we didn't talk about Hey Dude. All right, talk about uh, hey dude. Which was Count Ducula also. Hey dude, which was a bunch of teenagers that lived on a dude ranch. Yes, yeah. Oh, and that's it was adorable. Really it was good. funny. It was, it was really, really sweet. good. I saw the one with like thirty-year-olds that were on a dude ranch with Jack Palance. Oh, I don't know city, what city slickers! I love city slickers. Mm-hmm. And thank you, Katie. <laughs> you can be our mic today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, and we're done. <laughs> All right, I don't think we have anything else. So uh, yeah. let us know what your favorite Nickelodeon show was, and... Yeah. I would like to thank Katie for coming out. Yeah. Filling in for Mike and Nate and Allison. Hey. I would like Always to thank Charles pleasure. for thanking Katie. <laughs> no, I'd like to thank Ray for thanking me for thanking Katie and Allison. I would, I would like to thank myself for being here. <laughs> yes. I want to thank Ray for... For the fantastic food. Yes. 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 Guinness You're beefs too. It was delicious. <laughs> Should be I in like the Guinness Book of World Records. Ooh. And on that, uh, man, on that thank y'all for listening. That's my Joe. day. <laughs> thank you, Allison, for inviting us into your home once again. Oh, you're welcome. I still haven't seen a ghost yet. Um.